I am Dr. P. L. Narayanan. I am going to show you how to do direct ophthalmoscopy. This is a procedure that every medical student should be conversant with and put into practice at every available opportunity. Here are the students assembled for direct ophthalmoscopy class and we have a patient who is one of the student volunteers whose right pupil has been dilated. And these are the mannequins that we use to demonstrate ophthalmoscopy to the students. These are the different models of direct ophthalmoscope available and all of them have the same features. The direct ophthalmoscope consists of the head and the handle. The head consists of a lens wheel which can be rotated and it contains lenses which are plus and minus. The plus lenses are either green or yellow or black whereas the minus lenses are always red and the power of the lens is visible through a lens window that is located just below the viewing aperture. The illumination comes from the light source in, inside the head and there is a wheel here to give the viewing um, illumination and the novice is advised to use the largest circular uh, illumination. This is the viewing aperture and the examiner views the fundus through this viewing aperture. The light source comes from below and um, exits through this lens window and lights up the target. This is the handle and there is a switch here the examiner presses and rotates it clockwise in order to increase the intensity or anti-clockwise in order to decrease the intensity of the illumination. The patient should be comfortably seated looking into the far distance so that his accommodation is relaxed. Preferably in a semi-darkened room with his glasses off unless they are high powered to avoid reflections. A chaperone or relative should be seated in the same room. Informed verbal consent should be obtained. The examiner should introduce himself, explain on the procedure and obtain verbal consent. The patient must be told that the examination of the eye will be done with an instrument that emits a powerful source of light and this may cause some minimal discomfort. Ensure that the anterior chamber is not shallow by shining a torchlight at the temporal limbus and look for the absence of a crescentic shadow on the nasal iris. A short-acting mediatic tropicamide should be instilled into both eyes to dilate the pupils and the patient should be told that reading will be fuzzy and driving is not advisable for the next two hours. The examiner positions himself to the right of the patient to examine his right eye, holding the instrument in the right hand and using his right eye to look into the patient's eye. The examiner holds the instrument in the palm of his hand and uses the index finger to rotate the lens wheel. He uses the index finger and the thumb to operate the on-off switch. Turning the switch to the left increases the intensity and to the right decreases the intensity and puts off the instrument with a click.
Rotating the lens wheel to the left will give you plus lenses which are either green or black in color. Rotating the lens wheel anti-clockwise will give the red lenses which are minus lenses. This is the full aperture that the examiner uses. I'm now doing the direct ophthalmoscopy on my patient. The examiner approaches the patient from a distance of a third of a meter, known as distant direct ophthalmoscopy, directing the illumination at the eye with the viewing lens of zero power, looking for an orange glow, the red reflect, of light reflected off the retina. Medial opacities, example a corneal scar, a cataract, or vitreous opacity, will show up as dark silhouettes against the red background. No red reflex will be seen with dense cataract, vitreous hemorrhage, or retinal detachment. The examiner proceeds in the direction of the red reflex with plus 10 lens in the viewing aperture to focus on the cornea and rotating the lens wheel anti-clockwise, decreasing the power to focus on the target ahead. The examiner locates the optic disc, which lies nasally by moving from the temporal direction horizontally. He notes the three C's of the disc, cup, color, and contour. A clue to locate the disc is to follow the apex of the V-branching of the vessels. The examiner follows the vessels towards the periphery from the disc along the suprotemporal, supranasal, infrotemporal and infranasal vessels and notes the findings. He asks the patient to look in the direction that needs to be examined, using the thumb to raise the upper lid for better viewing. The macula is finally examined by asking the patient to look directly at the light source of the ophthalmoscope. The normal fundus. The optic disc is pink and has well-defined margins. The central cup is 0.3 times the size of the disc. The vessels arise from the disc and divide into four main branches, suprotemporal, supranasal, infratemporal, and infranasal branches. The diameter of the artery to the vein is 2 is to 3. Light will be reflected from the surface of the arteries. Light reflects from the fovea is known as the foveal reflex and is seen when the macula is viewed. Some abnormal fundi. Non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. There are hard and soft exudates. Hard exudates are yellowish, discrete, well-defined, numerous, and are in clumps. Soft exudates are whitish, with fuzzy outlines, large, few in number, and appear in isolation. Hemorrhages are described as dot, blot, or flame-shaped hemorrhages. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy show new vessels which may arise from the disc or from any of the vessels elsewhere, or boat-shaped pre-retinal hemorrhage. Hypertensive retinopathy. Look out for arteriovenous crossing changes. The veins normally cross underneath the arteries and may be concealed, deflected, known as salicine, tapered at either end, known as guns sign, or show venous engorgement in the distal portion of the veins, known as Bonnet's sign. 
the retinal arteries will show attenuation of the blood column and broadening of the light reflex from the surface of the arteries. This reflection may appear copper or silver colored in prolonged advanced hypertension. Optic disc may show papilledema in grade 4 hypertension. In glaucoma, the cup disc ratio is increased. The retinal vessels are shifted nasally as they arise from the disc. In age-related macular degeneration, there will be drusen in the macula. In central retinal vein occlusion, there will be extensive hemorrhages, often described as tomato-splashed appearance. In central retinal artery occlusion, the retina appears pale, but the foveola appears pink, and this is called the cherry red spot. In retinitis pigmentosa, a bone corpuscle like pigment deposit is seen in clumps in the equator close to the retinal vessels. In papilledema, the physiological cup is obliterated, the disc margins are blurred and raised above the retinal surface with peripapillary hemorrhages and the retinal veins are engorged and tortuous. In optic atrophy, the optic disc is pale white in color. Thank you.